making a suggestion of the space formed by the historic monument and its surroundings. In different modern edifices, the connecting surfaces of the bridges and the quays, the confined channel of the Seine, and sometimes a passing barge. While the colors are often startling in Matisse's Notre Dame series, the oblique compositional angle, traditional space-forming devices, and atmospheric effect evoke early rather than late Impressionism, in spite of the intense, novel hues. Notre Dame in the late afternoon, 1902. Clearly, this is a more adroit composition than the previous picture, with a control of color areas that tells us something of Matisse's power of self-discipline. We are now explicitly told that the picture was painted from an open window, for the shutter and jam form strong verticals on the right margin. The rather superficial impressionistic agitation of the earlier version is now gone. The barge on the river is absent, and the placement of the figures along the nearer quay more purposeful. The now empty surface of the river is painted with the same imperturbable solidity as the surrounding quays. The Path in the Bois de Boulogne, 1902. This composition is closely related to one of the older artist's favorite motifs the bend in a road leading to a village. The purple path and the stream at the right are major features that hold everything together. They are overshadowed by the frequently shapeless mass of foliage. The Attic Studio, Studio Under the Eaves, 1903. This unusual, somewhat crudely executed interior was painted in the artist's makeshift studio atop his father's house. In its somber tones, accentuated rather than relieved by the small, luminous landscape glimpsed through the distant window, it, like other pictures of this epoch, looks back beyond the intense, saturated colors of his work in the late 90s. The theme of the open window, heretofore an accessory in his interiors, if it appeared at all, is centralized and exploited for the first time in his work. It was a crucial motif that would occupy the artist until his last paintings. Cyrano, 1903. Carmelina, 1903. The body of the model merges with the draperies, and the roundness of her body works against the familiar rectangular foils of picture frames, a mirror, and drawings pinned to the wall. Tying the whole together is the startling contrast of lights and darks, particularly as they strike the robust, pliant body of the model, making of her figure something more stark and angular than it must have been, actually. Contrary to its conservative composition, Carmelina contains the germinal theme of the reflected mirror images of the artist and his model. Lux, Calm, and Volupt, 1904. The neo-impressionist style is contrived and stiff and immediately proved uncongenital to Matisse's temperament, even though the palette featured here would continue in his Fauve works. In the foreground, we discover a beach which recedes to the left, leaving an open bay at the right. That margin of the picture is secured by the trunk of a tree, which, through certain spatially ambiguous, almost Cezanne-esque devices, is linked in surface design with the mast and boom of the beached boat in the middle distance. On this sandy shore, a group of women are caught in a variety of indolent, relaxed attitudes. At lower left, a cloth is spread with the remains of a picnic Study for Nude in the Atelier, 1905. Lady with a Hat, 1905. Lady with an Umbrella, 1905. The Green Stripe, Madame Matisse, 1905. The Green Stripe down the nose 
is theoretically supported by the blue-green of the collar. This axis, with the densely painted flesh tones, support the blue-black crown of hair. These features are kept securely fixed in space through the intense, luminous orange, violet, and green surroundings. Few fauve canvases are as supported by color alone as this portrait of the artist's wife. Interior in Collioure, 1905. Collioure's Landscape, 1905. Open window, Collioure. This is the grand classic statement of the open window as a crucial formal and conceptual theme in Matisse's art. With its flanking, framing areas of intense blue-green and electrifying pink, the artist had a format in which he could work out the problem of broad, maximized areas of color. The theme of the landscape seen through the open window, a picture within a picture, carries on in the artist's work. The reflective and translucent panes of glass, vibrantly colored, supplant the more prosaic pictures and frames on the walls of the earlier interiors. The Pastoral, 1905. Study for Life of Joy, 1905. Life of Joy, 1905. Self-Portrait, 1906. Marguerite Reading, 1906. Standing Nude, 1907. In the context of Matisse's evolving figure style in these years, this picture, with its firmly modeled, massive, angular contours and squat proportions, emphasized by a rather oversized head, seems something of an anomaly. Boy with Butterfly's Net, 1907. Le Luxe, 1, 1907. This picture, a full-size study for the final version, is undoubtedly more interesting to the critic preoccupied with the evolution of Matisse's art. Le Luxe 1 contains many powerful features that had to be sacrificed in order to reach the expressive heights of the final version. Even the